a beautiful day. It's a sunny day. I'm gonna just go ahead and say it's the first day of summer. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna introduce uh, the our fighter, our champion, our fearless leader, Supervisor Lindsay Horvath. Happy Pride! <laughs> it is so remarkable to see you all here, to see this moment happening. Um, this started out as a dream and a conversation and a really fun idea, and now here it is. It's all happening. It's a real thing it's happening in this moment because of each and every one of you. I couldn't be more excited to be here with you to represent the 3rd District uh, in LA County. Yes? <laughs> to bring community together, to declare safe spaces, to make sure that this county uh, and its diversity is not just tolerated or accepted, but loudly and proudly celebrated in every corner. So some of you may know this area as Will Rogers Beach, but we know and we declare today that this is Ginger Rogers Beach. gathering place, a place of community, a place of protest, a place of healing, especially for our LGBTQ plus community. And I'm honored to be here today with many uh, incredibly special people. Um, I first want to acknowledge Ford because it's his eighth birthday coming up. So we just want to I want to acknowledge uh, assembly member Rick Zabur is here. LA County Fire Chief Maroney is here. Stephen Page from the LA Fire Foundation. Our Beaches and Harbors Director, Gary Jones. Tony Valenzuela and the One Archives Foundation, our incredible partner in documenting this history. Field the Bay CEO, Tracy Quinn, who partnered with us this morning before this event to make sure that uh, we're cleaning up the beach, that we're being good stewards. Thank you, Tracy, and your entire team from Heal the Bay. And our extraordinary artist, Kat Bing, whose entire team uh, brought to life the beauty and majesty you see on this guard tower, on that guard tower, and in so many murals throughout Los Angeles County. We thank you, Kat Bing, for being here. I also want to give a special shout out to a uh, current mayor and council member from Santa Monica, uh, Gleam Davis and Carolyn Tarosis. And I can't tell you how much it warms my heart to have my former colleague and friend here, John D'Amico, former council member and mayor of West LA. All right, that's like, I could acknowledge all of you because I'm so happy to see all of you. If I haven't hugged you, I want to. Um, People have been asking me about the history of Ginger Rogers Beach. Now, where I'm from, a lot of people already know that history. But as we've expanded the district and, and get uh, to different places in the county, not everybody knows the history. So I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what we are celebrating here today. Beginning in the 1940s, gay men began gathering on this beach just north of Santa Monica. The unofficial gay beach was dubbed Ginger Rogers, a nod to the glamorous actress of Broadway and Hollywood. It got the name not only because of the play on words with Will Rogers, uh, but Ginger Rogers uh, was also uh, an icon to gay men who were infatuated with Rogers' campy talents, androgynous performances, and diva persona. Throughout, okay, yeah, all of that. Um, throughout the 1980s and 90s, the beach became a hot spot for social events including fundraisers for those who were battling the AIDS crisis. The SS Friendship, a community staple gay bar located in Santa Monica Canyon, played a key role in beach culture. Today, Ginger Rogers is synonymous with gay beach, no more air quotes, to so many in Los Angeles. As the supervisor for LA's district with the largest LGBTQ population, and also as a former mayor of West Hollywood, 
I know that the term ally is something you have to work for, something you have to fight for, and something that you earn, you don't declare. Over the last six months in my office, I've worked to earn that title by joining my colleagues in the board and expanding gender affirming care, creating an LGBTQ plus commission, raising the progress pride flag over every county building throughout the county, and leading our commitment to uplift all of our LGBTQ plus community today and every day. We've seen, as we all know, an awful rise in hate during this Pride Month and leading up to it. Uh, but as we came together to form a community like West Hollywood, to form celebrations, protests, and community gatherings like LA Pride, this community will continue to stick together, to stand up for one another, and to believe that love will always win. Today, we're declaring that Ginger Rogers Beach is a place where love wins, it's where community wins, and it will always be a place where everyone belongs. Some will ask, given all of the challenges that we face in this moment in 2023, why is it important that we do this today? And I wanna say that with everything going on, it's even more important that we are doing this today. It is important that we all see ourselves reflected in the communities that we build. It is important that we know our history, that we all know this history, and that for those who are especially feeling alone in these dark moments, that they know there is a community where they belong. There is a space where they are safe. They are part of generations of history of people just like them. That this is a place where you come to belong, where you will be welcomed with open arms and loved unconditionally. To fill in the details of this historic place, however, I'd like to welcome the One Archives Foundation, their commitments to LGBTQ plus history, education, and activism in are unparalleled in our nation's largest and oldest LGBTQ plus history organization. Please welcome their executive director and our partner on this project, Tony Valenzuela. <laughs> Thank you, Supervisor Horvath. Um, you are an ally, but more than anything, you're a champion for our communities. Um, your unequivocal support of our lives is always appreciated, and we will always be a strong partner to you. Um, when um, Supervisor Horvath's office called One Archives Foundation uh, about helping to, sort of to research and create the narrative for the history of Ginger Rogers Beach, we thought, Perfect, that's why we're here. One Archives Foundation is the oldest active LGBTQ organization in the country. It was founded here in Los Angeles in 1952, and it plays a foundational role in, LG in the LGBTQ movement. Um, we were founded to start a magazine called One Magazine, which was the first widely distributed LGBTQ, LGBTQ publication in the country. Um, that we also had the One Institute as part of <clears throat> the organization, which was the educational arm of One. It was founded in 1956, and it was the first institution to offer advanced degrees in homophile studies in this country. Um, we also uh, were involved with the One magazine was pulled by the um, post by the Postmaster General in Los Angeles and charge this organization with obscenity, even though the magazine just had book reviews and letters to the editor, there was nothing obscene about it. And this organization, One Inc., took that battle to the Supreme Court in 1v. Olson and won in the first battle in the Supreme Court to address queer issues. This is your history organization here in LA, and that a Supreme Court battle opened the door for the proliferation of LGBTQ materials in the mail, which helped a, a decade before Stonewall help build community. And lastly, we have been um, cultivating the One Archive, which we gifted to USC in 2010. It's the largest repository of LGBTQ materials in the world, and it's a treasure for this city. Um, so I want to now introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Trevor Ladner, um, who is the Education Program Manager for ONE, who is going to speak briefly about how we put together this history of, of Ginger Rogers' speech. Thank you.
happy Pride Month, everyone. Um, I've had the joy over the past few months to dig into the archives and uh, really write the history of Ginger Rogers Beach. Um, so I'm excited to share that with you all today. The story of the queer beach at Will Rogers begins as early as 1940 in the throes of World War II. The war catalyzed the growth of gay communities in Los Angeles as young people embraced new opportunities uh, away from home. Uh, beaches, particularly this beach, served as a critical safe space for queer people. Um, historian Lillian Faderman writes, quote, the beach was especially attractive to gay people. It represented the very edge of the continent, far away from back home. Gay life could be found in the open, where the atmosphere was celebratory, carnival-like, even lawless. As a teen in 1957, Faderman watched Jose Saria, a World War II veteran and drag queen from San Francisco, give an impromptu performance on the beach. Saria would go on to become the first openly gay person to run for public office in 1961. The history of Ginger Rogers Beach is a story of the LGBTQ plus community asserting our right to love, to feel joy in community, and to live free from discrimination. The movement for LGBTQ plus civil rights runs through this place. In 1950, gay activist Harry Hay collected 500 signatures here for an anti-war petition, and then the following year founded the Mattachine Society, one of the nation's first gay rights organizations. Writer Christopher Isherwood and painter Don Bacardi met on this beach in 1952, the start of an enduring romance. And the beach grew in popularity in the 1960s and 70s. According to a lifeguard here in 1976, people read about it in gay magazines everywhere. It's known all over the world. Relations were mostly calm, despite some fights between gays and surfers, and a police incident on July 4th of that year. Police began cracking down on gays at Will Rogers as early as the 1950s in a larger effort to suppress homosexuality in Los Angeles. And in 1970, the advocate warned, repeatedly warned its readers of plainclothes vice officers stationed here. So on Independence Day 1976, queer beachgoers took a stand against police discrimination. When officers began attacking two gay men and attempted to arrest them, a crowd of 600 fought back as reported in the LA Times. True to the credence True to the credence of that day's celebration that each of us has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, beachgoers at Ginger Rogers resisted discrimination and asserted their rights. So by the 1990s, Ginger Rogers had solidified its status as a place of queer freedom. San Diego's Gay and Lesbian Times would characterize Southern California's gay beaches, including Will Rogers, as the West Coast answer to the Statue of Liberty, a symbol of hope and a brighter future. This Pride Month, we are honored to join Supervisor Horvath, Los Angeles firefighters and lifeguards, and commemorating the vibrant queer history of Ginger Rogers Beach. Uh, we invite you all to scan the QR codes that you can find on the interpretive signs uh, to explore deeper history and uh, archival photos from the One Archives at the USC Libraries. As we mark eight decades of queer joy at Ginger Rogers Beach, uh, there are many more past memories to be told, some of them told to me today as I've been here, um, and future memories to be made at this historic place. So thank you all. Next, I'd like to welcome up someone who is technically a freshman assembly member, but you wouldn't know it by his uh, already impact uh, up in Sacramento, uh, by his uh, legislative uh, record even before he was an elected official, and by his tremendous leadership, not only in the LGBTQ plus caucus, but throughout the assembly. And we know you'll be rising to even greater ranks very soon. Uh, the one and only Rick Zaber. <laughs> So thank you, Supervisor Harbath, for having me here. Um, and for those of you who don't know my district, uh, you're sitting in it. Uh, it starts out in Los Feliz, and we've got Universal City and Universal Studios. 
Hollywood, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, uh, Westwood in UCLA, West LA in Santa Monica. Um, so um, I'm really proud to be represented by Supervisor Horvath, and I'm proud to represent her and all of you who live in that area. Um, I want to really thank Supervisor Horvath for making today possible. You know, we both have something in common, and that is that we were um, uh, chosen by an icon in the LGBTQ community, Sheila Kuehl, to serve in seats that she previously represented. Um, and um, I'm very proud that my seat was, uh, that I, I represent the seat that Sheila Kuehl originally represented when she became the first LGBTQ person to ever serve in the legislature. Um, she also was the first LGBT person to serve on the Board of Supervisors, and Supervisor, uh, Supervisor Kuhl specifically chose Supervisor Horvath because she knew that Supervisor Horvath gets our community. She would be a fierce advocate. She already had been for many years in her role in West Hollywood, um, but she, we've seen what she has been doing every day since she entered office, understanding our community, unabashedly fighting for it um, and so I just want to thank you for making today possible and for everything you've been doing for our community and I want to tell you as a freshman legislator you know you uh, you have a lot of learning to do and you've got to in order to elevate your bills um, you've got to actually show a lot of support and I got to tell you the partnership that I've had with Supervisor Horvath's office has been amazing I just want to thank you for that as well and then I am just so excited about the fact that Ginger Rogers Beach is coming out today. Um, you know, uh, I am a vintage gay man, and so I uh, remember the times when I was a young man and started tiptoeing very in a closeted way to gay establishments in Boston where I came out, and often you would find gay bars that were tucked in alleys, in warehouse buildings, in buildings without a sign that indicated that it was a gay establishment. Generally, you just had a number on a street and you would uh, wonder whether you were in the right place, you were a little bit afraid, you'd open the door, and of course our community was inside. And to a certain extent, that's what Will Rogers Beach has always been. It's been the place where our community gathered to find each other, to find connection, to find safety. But it also, this beach also, as you heard, also has a history that is comports with the civil rights movement of the LGBTQ movement. Um, one of the things that we did at Equality California, and I remember Supervisor Horvath was one of the folks supporting this work, was we carried some really controversial bills while I was at Equality California, really trying to reform the sex offender registry. Not because people on that registry had done anything bad, but because people on that registry, including people on this beach, had been arrested for lewd conduct charges for simply holding hands or kissing on this beach. And so, you know, we've come a long way, um, but you know, this was sort of the secret queer beach. Today, it's not secret anymore. It's come out, and that's due to the fact that Supervisor Horvath has done what she has done to really make our community a priority. And um, on any beautiful sunny day, I've always known that um, I could find friends here. Uh, it will continue to be the, a place of refuge, a place where people know where to go, um, and will continue to be a gathering place uh, to find community and to find impact. Um, you know, expre expressions like this um, are not just symbolic. Um, expressions like this are really important because it shows not only that uh, we exist, but that our government is behind us. And so Supervisor Horvath and the entire Board of Supervisors and all of the members of our um, uh, uh, public safety and the agencies of the county who are with us today, I just want to thank you for the work that you've done in um, making sure that these uh, towers were painted. And um, I also want to just also thank uh, the um, Tony Valenzuela and all of the work that the nonprofit is doing. Uh, they're doing an amazing amount of work to chronicle the history of the LGBTQ plus community and the civil rights community. And also want to thank uh, uh, the 
folks, the elected officials are here, Glenn Davis and Super and um, uh, Council Member Terosis um, and former Council Member D'Amico for being here on this very, very special day. So thank you all very much. Thank you for having me. Know that I will be fighting for this community um, in Sacramento. We do have a, um, a very big bill that's coming up uh, in that has gotten through the first house of the assembly, the Safe and Supportive Schools Act, which is gonna be really important to protect LGBTQ kids, especially trans kids who are being so targeted. And the way we're doing that is by making sure the teachers and school staff have the tools and the training they need to protect these kids. Um, you know, as we are facing such, you know, I don't know if you heard about a week ago, the entire Republican caucus, except for three people, walked off the floor of the assembly because they were so offended by the fact that we actually had gay people that we were honoring, um, and, and the sister, and one of the sisters, Sister Roma, was there that day. Um, you know, that is, we, we do have, we are facing a bit of a backlash and people are, uh, are pulling back, but that just means that we have to work that much harder, and we know that, you know, the arc of justice, uh, the, history bends towards justice, but we have to be there to bend that arc. And you all are here today, and I uh, just want to thank you all, and thank Supervisor Horvath for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next, I'd like to welcome up Los Angeles County's own Fire Chief, Anthony Maroney. So good morning, everybody. I am the vintage, thank you very much, County of Los Angeles Fire Chief. And on behalf of our fire department, I would like to thank 3rd District Supervisor Lindsay Horvath and Beaches and Harbors Director Gary Jones, wherever you are, Gary. Oh, there you are. Uh, for inviting us to be part of this impactful community celebration of pride. I would also like to acknowledge the artist Cat Bing and I want to meet you later, Capping. I saw your Instagram. It was amazing. <laughs> For this amazing art installation on our lifeguard towers that visually and vibrantly signify a celebration of pride, diversity, inclusion, celebration, and belonging. This permanent art, art installation is a fitting tribute to the safety and security that this stretch of sand, known as Ginger Rogers Beach, provides. With towers 17 and 18 now painted in bold and bright colors, not one person can ever have a bad day here. These towers remind us of the importance of community and, and embracing the many people that make up our county of Los Angeles. And to speak a little bit about our, our department's lifeguards, they are amazing both gay and straight. They protect 72 miles of Southern California's coastline, 31 miles of which are beaches, including this one here. Our lifeguards protect and attend to over 77 million visitors every year who come to our sandy shores. Last year alone, our amazing lifeguard team responded to more than 14,000 medical calls and performed over 10,000 um, ocean rescues. Wow. And today, yeah, please give them a hand. And many of them are standing behind us. I, I, I venture to say, and I'm, I'm probably biased, is that we have the best lifeguard division in the whole United States, possibly the world. So thank you. As you can tell, these lifeguards, these lifeguard towers serve a dual purpose as functional workspaces for our beach heroes and as symbolic works of art that represent members of our LGBTQ plus community. May all those who stay in play here between these towers feel a sense of warmth, a place where they will always feel welcome, knowing they are loved, seen, accepted, and celebrated. Thank you again for allowing us to be part of your joyous year-round celebration of love for all, individuality and expression. Happy Pride Month. Thank you. So 
when you have a big, bold idea, you take a risk in reaching out beyond your office and those who support it to say, will you be a partner with us? And so I'm just incredibly grateful that the fire department chose to be with us uh, in this effort. Thank you very, very much. And to welcome up next from our fire foundation, Stephen Page. Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Supervisor Horvath. Thank you, Chief Maroney, uh, district representatives, and other esteemed guests. And especially thank you to all of you who have come out for this event. Um, after seeing the final product here, uh, it's absolutely amazing. I'd like to say this truly is a celebration of all of us. It doesn't matter where you come from. This is who we are. The Los Angeles County Fire Department Foundation was created with the purpose of helping our Los Angeles County firefighters and lifeguards through the support of a number of different programs. And out of those, the most important of them include diversity, equality, and inclusion. We're proud that these two towers in District 3 represent these three core traits, which are an important part of the department and a pivotal part of the community in which we all live together. The foundation continues to work hand in hand with the department to improve diversity, equality, and inclusion for all the members in the department. And with continued support from you, our community and donors, we can all work together to ensure that the department accurately represents and reflects you, the community that they serve. As with any foundation, we do rely on donations and grants. So I'm gonna ask for your help please go to supportlacountyfire.org and show your support for our programs, which, among other priorities, work to improve DEI in the department, and you'll be able to see the changes as they come down to the department so that it better does reflect all of us as a community. Again, thank you, Supervisor. from our county family, Beaches and Harbors, the director, Gary Jones. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be, join you and be included in this celebration this morning. It's such a beautiful morning, and, and the towers just look uh, beyond lovely. So, um, the Beaches and Harbors department is responsible for maintenance of more than 20 miles of the LA coast. Um, so first I'd like to thank Hilda Bay and everyone who participated in this morning's cleanup. We do as a department really appreciate your, your help on that. At Beaches and Arbors, we strongly believe everyone should be able to enjoy LA's iconic beaches, no matter what. The beach should be a welcoming for people of all ages, races, abilities, genders, and sexual orientations, period. Ginger Rogers Beach has been a haven for the LGBTQ plus community for decades. Since the 1940s, gay men from all over have found sanctuary here, where they are fleeing discrimination, rallying the community against McCarthyism and the Vietnam War, or raising money for AIDS victims. Today, we are celebrating Ginger Rogers Beach and ensuring that its history will not be forgotten. The Progress Pride installation on Lifeguard Towers 17 and 18 is a symbol of Valley County's commitment to inclusion. The towers are a beacon to the LGBTQ plus community, letting them know that this is a safe place to gather and enjoy the coast. We hope the members of this community will feel welcome here for decades to come. After all, Everyone should be able to enjoy the beach. Thank you. And when we do a project like this, um, it's not just about today, but for all the people who will enjoy it in the weeks and months to come. And uh, to enjoy not just this space, but uh, the entire surrounding, we have to um, task many people with making that happen. And so next, I want to welcome up the CEO of Heal the Bay, Tracy Quinn, who led this morning's efforts to help clean up the beach, who uh, her organization and through her great leadership continue to steward our beaches, protect our environment, and make sure that we are all good stewards of this region. Tracy Quinn.
Good morning. Um, I want to start by thanking Supervisor Horvath, the LA County Fire uh, Firefighters, uh, Beaches and Harbors, all of the partners, Assembly Member Rick Sabura, thank you so much for partnering with Heal the Bay this morning. It's such an honor to be here with all of you to celebrate this historic beach and LGBTQ plus pride. As Angelinos, we are so lucky to have these beautiful beaches and cool coastal waters right in our backyard. Our beaches serve as vital spaces for us to relax, have fun with our family and friends, catch waves, and connect with nature. At Heal the Bay, we have a few core beliefs. One is that these beautiful beaches belong to all of us, and everyone should feel safe and welcome here. I'm so grateful to be here today to celebrate a place that has served as a refuge and welcoming space for the queer community for decades. Another core belief is that a day at the beach shouldn't make anyone sick. So before I pass the mic back to Supervisor Horvath, let me share a few tips to help us all stay safe and healthy and keep this beach as beautiful as its namesake. It's important to know that 80% of the trash that you see on these beaches comes from our inland communities through our storm drain system. So whether you're visiting from Pacoima or the Palisades, South Pasadena or West Hollywood, any trash you see in your neighborhood can make its way to our beaches. So here are some tips for keeping yourself and our beaches safe and healthy. One, don't be a litter bug. Throw your trash in the proper receptacle. Two, always use reusable products instead of single-use plastics. And three, when you visit the beach, pack out what you packed in and try to pick up at least three extra pieces of trash on your way out. Our beaches belong to all of us, and it's up to all of us to care for them. Thank you so much to everyone who joined our Heal the Bay Beach cleanup this morning. We picked up almost 700 pieces of plastic. Great job. Last year, we picked up 12,000 pounds of trash from our LA County beaches. It really is up to all of us. So thank you, Supervisor Horvath, for inviting Heal the Bay to be part of this very special event. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you. You know you're in the right crowd when don't, get a, don't be a litter bug gets a woo. I love it. Um, I just want to thank everyone for your words today, for the spirit that you've created, for your hard work in making all of this possible. I'm incredibly moved, very happy uh, to share this with uh, the rest of LA County. We know that today's action shows that we will never back down in the face of hatred, that we will continue to stand by and with our community, a community that has long sought to be long and be included. We're celebrating their history of activism, their history of fighting for social justice, because it is our history as Angelinos. And I know that we like to say LGBTQ+, because all of us are trying really hard to include everyone, but I wanna say to our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, oh. gender expansive, intersex community, and everyone in the family, thank you for making this beach such a wonderful place. Oh. Pride began as a protest, and unfortunately, given the dark backdrop, we know that protest must continue. But we also have to celebrate our wins. We have to celebrate progress. We have to celebrate our history while we continue that fight and our struggle towards justice. Today, these lifeguard towers will officially tell the history of this beach, this wonderful respite for our LGBTQ plus community. And our towers will loudly and proudly declare that we welcome everyone here. Before we end, I wanna conclude by thanking the artists who made this possible. Kat Bing, thank you. Thank you for working for several weeks with your talented team of artists. Thank you for your vision and for sharing your talent with us. You have absolutely knocked it out of the park. LGBTQ plus team of artists is why Los Angeles is such a special place. Her work, and I'm going to quote here from her website, focuses on community, kindness, humor, and optimism in the face of a potentially scary future for humankind if we don't get our shit together. So she's not wrong. Please welcome Kat. I'd like to welcome you up to the stage to share a few words. Yay! Kat? Good morning. Um, 
thank you to everyone who's involved with this project, um, especially my amazing crew, Lauren Mudo, Danielle Garibrantz, Kai Aragon, Aragon, Trunk Junk, AKA Jess Moore, Sadie Spizzano, Nikki Wakeman, Joyce Landicho, Nikki Alburn, Nico Alburn, and the GOAT, the amazing Amber Easton, who is here with me every day, smiling and sweating. Um, we had such a great time painting these towers. We got so much positive feedback from the community. Uh, thank you so much to the very attractive lifeguards for <laughs> letting us work around you. Thank you, Scott Snyder, for being our lifeguard liaison and communicating with the captain on our behalf and making sure we were taken care of. Also, I'm super thankful to Nick Wyville for coordinating this whole project. And thank you, Lindsay Horvath, for making this possible. While we were working, we had several passers by asking about uh, the top colors of the towers and what they meant. They knew about the rainbow, but they were curious about the pink, blue, black, brown, and white. And they were genuinely excited to learn about the Pride Progress flag and um, it representing queer lives, trans lives, and people of color. I hope that this is a great step toward people seeing these colors and recognizing and appreciating the meaning of our progress flag. A lot of artists could have been chosen for this project, and I'm so honored and proud that I got to be a part of such a symbolic undertaking. And I'm so glad I could bring on my group of queer friends to be involved. Thank you so much. And to close it out, I just want to thank my extraordinary team. Um, you heard, um, I'm going to save Nick for last, but um, my chief of staff, Esteban Montevior, um, who uh, as former president of Pride um, and as someone who has championed uh, this community for so very long, um, who uh, helped to bring this vision to life, I want to thank him especially. Woo! And to shout out a few members of my team who are here, I see Barry Worth Garvin, who's helping yeah! to run and lead our Justin Orenstein, who's making us stay on track on Metro. Um, I want to thank, um, who else is here? Is Zach here? Zach's here. Zach Gatesick? Oh, Zach was here, but we love him. Cece Cabello, who's our senior strategist, leader in all amazing things, who brings wonderful experience. Um, and I just want to, did I miss anybody else? No, oh, Marco. Marco's new. Marco is making sure that I show up on time, that I'm keeping my shit together. Thank you, Kat. So um, thank you, Marco Enriquez. Angie, Angie, where are you? She's in, she's in the back hiding always, but we love Angie. Angie, thank you. Angie worked in the county long before we ever got there. And she's helped to make sure that we are onboarded, that we know what we're doing, that we're getting acquainted with all the things that we need to be doing and making sure that we have a sense of the history of the place that we are in. Thank you, Angie, for your great leadership. And now I want to thank Nick Wyville. Who has just been, yes, he deserves all of it. Give it loud. Nick has been the designer of our floats. He has been, he has been Pride Month. If you've liked anything we've done for Pride, it's because of Nick. Woo! Nick has been uh, making sure that we celebrate this month loudly, proudly, in the face of such awful adversity. Nick is just um, making sure that we are trying to be and hoping to be that beacon of hope for others. Thank you, Nick, for all of your work this month. I have an extraordinary team, so I'm gonna continue introducing you to them over the months and years ahead. Uh, but thank you all for being here to commemorate this incredibly special moment. I want to invite back up um, our chief, uh, the fire department, our fire foundation, One Archives Foundation, our artists, and Heal the Bay to come up and take a commemorative photo. And uh, let's enjoy the beach. Woo! Happy Pride!